Hi everybody, Carmen here with Quality Sewing. And for today's How Do I, I am going to talk about how do you use a stitch regulator to help your quilting? So the very first thing is what is a stitch regulator? So I'm sitting in front of the beautiful Janome M17. And normally when we're quilting, there's lots of different ways to do quilting, right? So the first thing for quilting is you piece your fabric together, right? And you create your block. And then to actually take those sandwiches, if you're taking your top layer and your batting and your, and your bottom layer, and you're making that quilt sandwich, you need to quilt them together, okay? And one of the ways that a lot of people do quilting is they do free motion quilting. And you can see here, there are lots of different styles of free motion quilting, right? We've got a geometric shape. We have some like clamshells. Uh, we have this little rope curly cue. This is one of my personal favorite ways because it doesn't matter if you cross your line. So I love that. Here's more traditional stippling. But when you are doing this, the way that you use your machine is you are going to just, you start the needle and I'll just show you here quickly. You start and then you just start the, you, oh, there we go. You start moving and you're drawing your picture, right? So if I'm doing some stippling here, you are just drawing this picture. Now what's cool about a stitch regulator, which is what I have on this machine. So what I have on this machine, you can see I've got this big foot here and it's plugged into the back of the machine. This is Janome's accurate stitch regulator. So normally when you are doing a uh, free motion quilting, on your home machine, you are just trying to gauge how fast your needle is going up and down, right, which is just your speed versus how fast you move your fabric to manage your stitch length. So if you think about that for a minute, that sounds sort of hard, right? Because you're like driving the fabric and you're drawing your picture, but then you want to make sure that you're going the right speed to keep your stitch length where you want it. What's cool about a stitch regulator is it does that for you. So it is amazing. So like when I start this again, you can see here, right? If I go faster with my fabric, the needle goes faster. If I slow down, the needle slows down. Because what this is doing is it's giving me the same stitch length, no matter how fast or slow that I go. So this stitch regulation system, there are stitch regulators out there for many different brands of machines. Uh, Bernina has a stitch regulator on their machine. There's a lot of sit down and long arm machines that have stitch regulators. Um, and then Janome also has a stitch regulator. And what's really exciting is um, the M17 has this accurate stitch regulator, but so do some new models. So there's a brand new Janome M8 that is coming out and that is going to have this exact same accurate stitch regulator on it. And we are really excited about that. So let's talk about what makes this stitch regulator unique and then how we can use it for more types of quilting besides just free motion. So what I was showing you here was the free motion quilting and that is the same way that you could do any of these different things. And when you have a stitch regulator, it's going to keep your stitch the same, the same length, no matter how fast or slow you go. So all you have to think about is drawing your picture. So this stitch regulator is unique. And I just cut my threads here. This stitch regulator is unique because it has all of these different little feet that can go on it. So what I was just using there is a traditional stippling, um, stippling foot, right? Just a free motion foot that's circular. It also comes with an open toe free motion foot. This is actually my personal favorite foot to use, even if you're doing any type of free motion quilting, there's lots of different free motion feet. What I love about this is it connects and so you can use it. Any of these feet are going, you can use it with your, um, with your uh, accurate stitch regulator. So it just snaps on like that. And so I'll just show you how this foot works. What's great about an open toe, foot, let me put these back in their little case, get them out of the way. What's great about an open toe foot is that now I can, as I start here, I can see where my needle is. The foot isn't blocking it, so it makes it a little bit easier for me to actually see what I'm doing. 
And that's true of all open toe sewing feet. I also love a standard open toe foot for doing applicator things. And it's nice if your foot is open, you can actually see better where you're going. And that's really great when you're free motion and you're having to drive, drive the fabric. So that's two of the feet. The other foot that is so cool is, and the way that these feet come off is you just push the button on the back and then this little foot just slides. And then we just slide this one on. So this is so cool. This is a ruler work foot. So if you're not familiar with ruler work, I'm going to show you how it works. But ruler work, you can see here on like this sample here, ruler work allows you to get curved or straight lines because we are going to follow a ruler. So we're going to use a ruler like this. And then I'm going to put this foot on and then I'm just going to keep it lined up with the shape here and then it is going to create that shape for me and there's tons of different rulers out there and you can get ruler work work feet for most any sewing machine right there's lots of different ones out there uh so steady and westerly make a ton of different ruler feet um there's also a lot of branded ruler feet so if you have maybe you have a baby lock machine you can get the baby lock ruler work foot um, or Bernina has a ruler work foot. But what's cool about this is it works with the stitch regulator. So that way you're still getting the, um, it's still making sure that your stitch is staying consistent and the same size and you can use the ruler work foot. So this is just cool because it allows you, just allows you to have all the helpers. So your quilting is really beautiful and it makes your quilting much easier. So let's slide this guy on and I'll show you how it works. Don't hit the needle there. There we go. Snap that guy on. So then if we are gonna try to do a little ruler work here, let's just see, we're gonna try to go across here. So on this machine, this machine is so smart. You can see I was actually over here in free motion mode and I turned my accurate stitch regulator on. So I just clicked it and turned it on. But now I'm gonna go to ruler work. So I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell my machine what I'm doing. I'm gonna select the light setting. Um, and the setting here is gonna determine the height of my presser foot. And then I will lower my presser foot. I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that I have my needle down on so it will pause for me. And then I am just going to start here and then see how I'm keeping that ruler foot right in the groove there and then it's following along for me. So then I can stop and if I wanted to keep going, I would just go right here to this point and I would start again and follow the shape. Oops, there you do have to keep it actually up against there. Uh, hard when you're trying to do lots of things. <laughs> like when you're on camera, these are all of those moments where it doesn't quite go right, but you can see how easy it is. You just follow the different shapes. I pulled this ruler out because it has lots of different shapes, right? It has a straight here. You can do um, the, the triangles like we did on here. You can do the curves, but you can see right here how fun this is, how we have all of these beautiful shapes that were all done with the ruler work. And I have another sample that shows you all this, like all the different things you can do with ruler work and with the stitch regulator because ruler work really allows you to have more shapes. Um, because I have found for myself that a lot of times when I'm doing free motion quilting, when I can be successful just drawing myself are things like this or like this. I find this one pretty hard to do actually all by myself. Um, I, can, I find I can do these sorts of shapes just by myself. And then if I wanna get more of a straight line or if I actually wanted to do this sort of shape, I would actually use a ruler uh, with ruler work and just follow the curve and go that way because that would be a lot easier for me. Um, and that is very fun. And then the final foot that comes with this guy is echo quilting. And this is the echo quilting foot. And what echo quilting, the way echo quilting works, and it's the one thing you know that I don't have a sample of today, but the way echo quilting works is let's say you have a shape of, let's say I had a heart here or something. Then when this foot is on, you are just going to trace around the outside of that shape and then do it again and just do it over and over and over again. So then it sort of looks like, you know, when you drop a pebble in water and it creates that ripple effect, that it creates that effect for your quilting where that echo of the shape of, 
the shape of either your, your square, your block, or maybe it was an applique or something. Um, and like that example I was using was a heart, right? It's just going to look like it's rippled. The quilting has rippled out. Um, and that's what echo quilting is. So, um, the stitch regulator is super great. It really helps for any form of free motion quilting. And there's lots of different stitch regulators out there. Um, if you have ever struggled to, with your free motion quilting to keep that stitch length the same, no matter how fast or slow you drive your machine, I'd highly recommend looking into a stitch regulator. If you just didn't even know about this, hopefully this is sort of helpful to learn a little bit more about free motion stitch regulators and how ruler work works. So happy sewing and let us know if you have any questions.